Alright, what's going on today YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite cyclist YouTube channel. This week, we're talking about the fat bike again. But before we get into today's video, if you are new to my channel, make sure you head down below, hit that subscribe button for me. If you already are subscribed, make sure that little bell icon on your next side is checked off. That way you get notified every time I upload. That way you don't miss any awesome cycling content we got on this channel. So today we're back and we're talking about my good old fat bike here. And recently got asked the question, do I regret buying my fat bike? And a lot of the stumps from here in Reno were starting to warm up a little bit. Starting slowly to warm up some. Snow is starting to melt. There's not much here in the actual Reno area of snow anymore. So it's all kind of melted. It's just a little bit of mud and back to sand. And a lot of you guys know I bought this bike back in November. And the purpose, my purpose was so I could ride during the winter. And ride in the snow and do stuff in the winter that I normally couldn't on a regular mountain bike or road bike. That I wouldn't want to do because it's too slippery, too slushy, too snowy, and I couldn't get through it. So I wanted a fat bike for that purpose, and that's why I picked up the cheapest fat bike I could find. And then upgraded it to see if it made any kind of difference and if it's actually a usable bike out in the snow and conditions I want to use it in. So with the snow gone, do I regret buying it? Does it just sit there like a paperweight? Do I actually use it? What's the deal with it? So we'll start off with this. I love this bike. This bike is my one of my favorite bikes to ride. It is a bike I will just grab and go. And never have to worry about it. You just grab the bike and start riding and you're perfectly fine. And you're ready to go. Which is amazing. It's one of the things I loved about my Superfly when it was a single speed. Is it was pretty much always ready to go. And this is even simpler than the Superfly. Because it doesn't have any brakes. It just has a coaster brake and that's all it has. So there's literally nothing that can go wrong on this bike. And it's always ready to go as long as the tires have air. So first thing we'll talk about is I'm not getting rid of this bike because I was talking to my daughter the other day. This is her second favorite bike I have. I didn't think that would be the case. But the fat bike is her second favorite bike I have. In case you're wondering, the first is it's a Superfly, my mountain bike. She loves that bike the most. This is her second favorite one. So this bike's not going anywhere. It's one of my daughter's top three favorites. This bike is staying around. She loves when I ride this bike. She loves the way it looks. She thinks it's really funny with how big the tires are. And I thought it was just to be pulled around the trailer or wagon while I'm riding it. Second, this bike is actually very comfortable. So during the winter, you run the tire, I run the tires very low pressure. So I was running about like six to eight PSI, which sounds ridiculously low, but that's about normal for a fat bike. And it worked great in those conditions. It gripped everything. It gripped snow, ice. I never had a problem with it at all. Now we're kind of more in the spring and stuff is dry. Six or eight PSI is really slow on the road. That's, there's a lot of rolling resistance when you gotta deal with that. So right now I have the tires filled up to 20 PSI, which is the max these tires can go to, which again, sounds like not very much, but that's a lot for a fat bike tire. These tires are these tires are pretty solid for a fat, for a fat bike tire. So I have 20 PSI just for riding around, riding around my neighborhood, riding to pick my daughter up from school or whatever that may be. It's still super comfortable. You know, you normally would fill a tire, fill a bike tire up to the max PSI, and then you would notice a huge difference on, and now riding is great, it's not as comfortable as it was with lower tire pressure. Nah, still super comfortable, still super great, and I'm honestly surprised by that. It's still a great bike, even during the, even with the tires pumped up to a max pressure of 20 PSI. Still rides awesome. Third thing, supposedly this thing does good in the sand. I live in Nevada. I live in Reno. There's desert all around me. There's supposed to be desert down the street and up the street and down the street and this way and this way and this way. There's sand everywhere. And I want to try it out in the sand. I've been wanting to give that a shot to see if it actually works in the sand. I've heard these work very well in the sand with that same kind of low pressure you'd run in the winter. Run them in the sand and they'll work perfectly great. So I'm hoping that's going to be the case. I'm hoping it works really good in the sand. And if it does, makes it even more my bike. I have sand everywhere around me. So this bike hopefully is going to be a great bike for the summer as well. It's always great to take my mountain bike out or something with gears out and be able to climb stuff and do trails and all this stuff. But for just cruising around and having fun, this bike's the way to go. Now, is a steel single speed coaster brake fat bike for everybody? No, this is not the bike for everybody. There's so much better fat bikes out there that have far more options have gears on them, have hydraulic disc brakes, and I have a much better position, honestly, for more aggressive riding, like more of a mountain bike. They're out there, there's tons of them, the aluminum, carbon, whatever. There are all sorts of other fat bikes out there that are better, in theory, than this bike. You know, if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for something that can do everything, and can climb and do trails and all that, that's the bike for you. If you're looking for something just to mess around on, this is the bike here. This bike is way less than those bikes are. And it's not something I feel bad about having as having during the summer and the rest of the year. It's something I can use during the rest of the year and I feel like I want to use it during the rest of the year because it's so much different than the rest of my bikes. If I had a bike that was all upgraded and had gears and hydraulic disc brakes and suspension fork and was aluminum or carbon, it would be just like my mountain bike. So I'd feel like I had two bikes that do essentially the same thing. 
So that's another reason why I don't regret this bike. This bike is completely different than the rest of my fleet. I do not have a single speed coaster brake bike in my fleet that I actually want to ride. And this bike fits the bill. And it's a great bike to fit the bill. And it's something that's really random and fit, works great. So do I regret the fat bike? No, I do not regret the fat bike. Do I recommend everybody try a fat bike out sometime in their life? Yes, try a fat bike out. They are fun, it is different, and you will enjoy the ride, I guarantee you, because of how different it is and how not used to it you are, it will be a fun bike to ride. So hopefully you guys learned something from the video. Hopefully you learned my opinion on if I regret buying a fat bike and what I feel about my fat bike now that winter's over. If you did enjoy it, give it a big thumbs up. Appreciate the support. Any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Love talking to you guys. Love answering any questions you guys have. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching today.